Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Lyceum night coming to you from the Paul Christian Spiritualist Church. And we're down on the south coast of the UK. Uh, uh, solo night tonight, just me. I wasn't quite sure if I would have been available tonight, so I didn't book anybody just in case. Um, but I am. Lucky you, eh? <laughs> Anyway, um, just a little chat tonight about things. Um, I'm sure an awful lot of you are aware of the current amount of discourse and upset within the movement of spiritualism. I'm choosing my words carefully here. Um, because this isn't going to be a tirade and a rant about one side or the other. It, it's about the energies of it all. <clears throat> you know, spiritualism, what does it teach us? What does it show us? You know, it shows us that outside of this physical world, outside of this life that we lead day in, day out, from birth, right the way through to death, is not the only thing. We are not alone. We have the ability and we have the knowledge that those who have gone before us can contact us, can talk to us, can inspire us, can heal us can bring us so much benefit in this life. You know, when we pair away at the energies here and think about statements like that, <clears throat> well, we should. I don't like saying we've got to or we must. You know, to me, spiritualism is an open book. It's an open table. Take what you want from it. And that's absolutely fine. Um, but, you know, in and through this knowledge, we know that the other world want the best for us. The other world are gifted very much with the foresight, the understanding, and I'm not talking predictive mediumship or anything like that, but they know what is going to suit us. They know what, where we're going to excel, not the areas where we're going to succeed, where are we going to excel? You know, we'd all like to succeed in certain areas. We'd all like to, I don't know, as evidential mediums, every time you do a den anywhere, it's going to be a sellout, you know. Yeah, we'd all like that. But where do we excel? Where do we excel? And this is one of the things the spirit world share with us about excelling our own virtues, excelling our power being aware of our power, our presence, our part in this production of life. And a lot of the time, it's not in the public eye. A lot of the time, it's not being the best evidential medium, the best healer, the best philosopher, the best church president, the best whatever. It's just about doing what is best for you and where you are. So it is very, very sad when we see um, all this conflict that's going on. And it's not just one place. And we all know where we're thinking of when we mention this. It's not just in that one theatre. It's all over. <coughs> Social media has got a big part to play in this. Social media has now become that platform for everybody where their uh, thoughts can be voiced and aired and shared. Often, as it is with the written word, the inflections are missing, the tonal qualities are missing. So quite often what is written down isn't what was said. But we tend to overlook that. You know, this world at this time, I don't think ever has the world been in this greater turmoil? Everywhere we look, 
every level of our life, uh, be it personal relationships, work, home, whatever, everything has got these huge challenges, it seems, at the moment. It's like the illusion has been stripped away from many things. We're seeing things in a different light. We're all struggling. Everybody is struggling. On one level or another, everybody is struggling. You know, with the mental health crises, um, that says so much that people just aren't able to function uh, in this ever-changing society in which we live. The goals and aspirations out there, and I'm not talking spiritualism now, I'm talking, you know, just everyday life. Our values, you know, to have the best car, the best house, best holidays, best amount of money in the bank, all these things. And it's been sold as this dream to everybody that this is what you should aspire to. This is what you should get. This is what you should go for. And we all know that a lot of that is going to be unachievable for whatever reason. But we've lost sight of the things that we have in our life that suit us. The things that, you know, I'm sat here, as you can see, lovely lounge, plenty of booze. <laughs> got a cat fast asleep in the corner, just had dinner. You know, I'm quite a happy bunny. And I'm grateful for what I have. But as I say, you know, our society now has got this big drive. And sadly, social media, some people on social media are either unaware of or not looking at or ignoring is with all this discontent and all the players being played out in these series of posts and counter posts and comments and everything really known to a very 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 small fraction of the population of england let alone the world and outside of our understanding and connection with these people you know 99 percent of people don't know anybody that's being talked about and what's more they don't care because there's nothing to do with them <coughs> and i think that was said to me um by a wonderful tutor and i found that a great leveler i really did because it just suddenly bumped perspective back into things and as I say, perspective is one of those things. I think it's just being lost a wee bit. The sense of perspective. You know, so-and-so says so-and-so. Does it affect you? Is it your business? And um, is it personal? If it doesn't meet those bars, then simply leave it alone. <laughs> it's not hard, but apparently it is. But it shouldn't be this hard. So why, you know, bringing it back into spiritualism, quick hello to everybody. Reverend Ashley, hello. Anne, Marion, Craig, hello, hello, hello. You know, why are we feeling this um, discord that's going on? As I say, this is not just about one subject. This is quite endemic. Uh, you look through a lot of people's posts and... Yeah, there's little jibes, little snipes, little gouges, you know, and just think, what, what have we learned? You know, we are grassroot level. We are sensitive beings. And in and through that sensitivity, yes, we may have that ability to react impulsively, when something is perceived to have been said, because again, I'll draw you back to all the written comments. You read a comment and I read a comment and we'll come out with two totally different opinions of what's actually been said. But in and through our sensitivity, you know, we, we can have that um, reaction rather than response to things. And it's, it's very sad, it is very sad that you see all this going on. And the sad thing still is, especially right at this time, there's something 
gone off with a bang out there again. And in three weeks' time, people have forgotten about it. Three weeks' time, people will be having a dig at somebody else. Three weeks' time, people won't care. <laughs> so how do we manage this? How do we, as sensitive beings, manage this? Because it is very difficult, and it, is, it can be incredibly hurtful. It can be incredibly detrimental to ourselves, our energy, our well-being, our mental states when these things go on. But it is about withdrawal and it is about inviting and involving the other world. And this is something time and time and time again that I see people not doing. All these posts out there all begin with the same thing. I, 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 I. I, nobody's ever said, you know, well, I sat with my team and they said, have you thought about this? Is is taken on that very deeply personal and very emotive level, uh, which then creates more energy. I always say with an argument, do you know the best way to win an argument? I treat it like a game of ping pong. Just put the back down. <laughs> as simple as that. It's not about winning arguments although we in our human condition we do want to win we, we've got that competitive element uh millions of years of evolution of you know the fastest run was the one that succeeded our emotional and in our spiritual interactions with people we shouldn't be looking to win because when we start bringing in that energy of I've, I've got to win this you know we are then actually turning it into an argument if it wasn't one already uh, because it's something to win you know I'd much rather prefer the air of debate about a lot of these things and do you know what if you don't agree at the end of the debate that's fine <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely fine. Just say, you know, okay, yeah, I fully understand where you're coming from, but for me at this time, uh, it's beyond me. I'm not going to be able to get there. And so, yeah, carry on. You know, we do what we need to do now. And a lot of this is about dealing with things here, here, now, in the present, in front of us. Because I also see in all of these um, snipes at each other, you know, people are dragging up, think, well, in 1982, I, th and you just think, really? You've been carrying that around all that time? Really? Why is that then? <laughs> or we go the other way, because we, we then create this outcome that we want. Two really big flaws with that approach. Number one, you know, whatever happened in the past happened in the past. The effects of it changed everybody involved to the people that they are today. That is irrefutable. There is no need to keep dragging that up. If you've had a bad experience with somebody in the past and then you allow that to be repeated once, maybe twice, maybe three times then that's your message to say, you know, what do we learn? Because everything we do, we learn from. And not every lesson, as I always say, comes wrapped in bows and with puppies. Some lessons are bloody hard. Some lessons are painful. Some lessons are really hurtful. But it's how we recover ourselves from that. That's, that's where the real lesson. You know, I had a lovely lady i can talk about her because she's now upstairs um and she kept getting messages about her brother and she said to me one day and she said Do you know what every week the medium's talking to me about my brother i haven't spoken to them for 28 years i don't even know if they're on the other side and i said well maybe it's time to do your own work and Forgiving, forgetting, maybe try to get in contact if you can. If you can't, okay, you've lost the opportunity. 
but to sort of like lay that energy to rest. Very sadly, very soon after, she was the one actually that passed the spirit. This is what the other world was saying. You know, before you come over here, try and lose some of the baggage. Uh, and I believe that really was the message to this lady. Lose some of that baggage because it's going to be really difficult for you over this side because you're going to have to work through all of that. And if you can work through some of that now while you're here by just picking up a phone and just going, yeah, well, it didn't work. I know we're blood, but you know, there's no love there. But I, I don't wish you ill. I wish you well. And thank you. Do you know what? Wow. What a cathartic experience that is. And that's what we miss. That's what we tend to overlook, these cathartic experiences where we, we can just say to people, you know, no matter what the round, no matter what is going to be the response. But if you go in there and just use that spiritual understanding, you know, we talk about the brotherhood of man. Well, that seems to have been shut to the sidelines at the moment, quite frankly. Um, go back to people and just say, you know what? I really don't agree with what you're saying, but I am not going to be a complete bitch about it i am not going to slow off on every platform that i can do because that's not going to help the healing that's not going to start off that healing because you never know what your reaction is from the other side you may be saying to them you know this is not working i don't agree with what you've done however i'm not going to hate you that's going to have an effect on the other person but our human side, we want that effect to be a little bit more prominent, shall we say. <laughs> we want that effect to be a little bit more profound and impactful. But their lesson isn't our lesson. Our lesson is how we handle it. Our lesson is how we respond to these things. Our lesson is how we interact with it. What the other person does with it, actually, is none of our damn business. I'm a great believer in that philosophy. Uh, this came about, this is sort of like condensed. When I was talking one day and I said about there was a homeless truck in the bus station near us. Uh, and I said, oh, yeah, have you seen him, poor old bugger? I was there game of five the other day. And the two people involved in the conversation both went on the attack and said, well, they're only going to spend it on drugs. Only gonna... And I said, do you know what? My act of giving is my act. That's the end. After I've given that fiver, what he does with it is none of my business. I would like to think that he would buy food. I would like to think that you may put it towards overnight accommodation. I would like, but I'm, I'm not given that fiver with this stipulation. I've given that fiver because I generally felt sorry for him. And I was in a position to do that little bit. I mean, I'm not trying to make myself out to be a saint because trust me, I'm not. Um, but we do these little things. We do these little acts of just pure humility from the heart. But we can expand that. And when we come across these um, disputes going on, you know, do, do we need to join in? Do we need to stoke up the fire? Um, I'm seeing there's one thread particularly long at the moment. And I know 98% of those people have got absolutely nothing to do with the, the core foundation of what's being spoken about. But they're all in there, you know, they're throwing their little spears. Woo! I went there 10 years ago. They said this six years. You have to just think, wow. Wow. <laughs> what, what have we missed in your development? What, what part of your development has been either woefully not taught shown, talked about, educated, just not even understood. You know, everything we do has an effect. 
And when we, and this came to me this morning, and this is this is a creepy one. This is a, a moment I had while I was waiting for the kettle, and I thought, oh, I'm not keen on this, but yeah. It went along the lines of um, everything we do, everything we say, everything we think, we take with us. Sounds a bit trite, but if you sort of like hold that for a moment, <clears throat> if you just think about that one simple statement, just for a brief moment, Again, it's one of those levelers that comes in. It's one of those things that just pulls you up a bit, stops the galloping horses and lets you go, yeah, 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 I must be mindful of this. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just, as I say, it's just so, so sad. You know, we, we see relationships, any relationship, you know, will have its testing times. Uh, and during that testing times, how things are managed, and we're not talking here just personal level relationships, we're talking business, ethical, moral, whatever. We, we form a relationship. And sometimes a relationship runs its course. Sometimes a relationship gets to the point of going, do you know what, it's been a blast, but now, you know, we're going our separate ways. How do we handle that? Quite often, the other person, therefore, they said this, they did that, yada, yada. You know, and it shouldn't be that. It's just sort of like, you know, thank you. I've, I've had such a blast. I've had such a good time. And it's sad. But life goes on. You've got a wonderful path. I've got a wonderful path. Let's walk along it <laughs> and not throw rocks at each other. Very fun, very fun. So good evening again to lovely Rish. Good evening, darling. Elspeth, hello. Mr. Abbott, I can see your comments this week. For some reason, I couldn't see them last week. I was a bit upset when I went back and saw that you commented and I hadn't picked up on it. So Tim saying, oh, I'm up there. There we go. Try that again. I'm on my laptop tonight. I'm being a lazy boy tonight. Evening, Laurie. As a medium, we are in the business of mediating messages of love and hope. I wonder when that's going to rub off on us and have some kind of value that we can put into action because that's what's needed right now. OMG, Tim. So true. And do you know what, Tim? You, you, you've touched on... You know, I have things. <laughs> I have things in my head. And it, it, when I get a thing in my head, I keep working away at it, sitting with the other world, talking about it, and just trying to work through and get an understanding. And the current thing, which is having a big effect on um, things within the church, personal development, etc is you know it's wonderful that we can teach the ability uh, of constructing uh, a message the various skill sets that we need to develop to uh, be in that mindset to be that link between the two worlds to achieve that true communication and relay that communication without this getting in the way. But I do wonder if we have neglected the moral, the ethical um, development of the medium themselves. I know, Tim, you're a great exponent of psychic work, um, as are a lot of people now. And I know you have um, a great understanding of the psychic work. And you teach that, you know, the difference between a message from a discarnate being as opposed to a psychic reading, which is quite right. Psychism is great. I love using my psychic side. I absolutely love it. Sometimes I wish I wasn't, but it's there and I love using it. 
but again, you know, is is I think we need to maybe look out a little bit into the wider world and see what is being taught, how it's being put across. I'm not going to go down the line, you know, we, we, this is quite an often uh, a thing people say, um, and I just find it a bit negative. You know, you get somebody who does a five-minute course and the next thing they're out on the platform, next thing they're out on teaching. Right, let's take that as read. We know that happens, okay? But we allow it to happen. Let's not put the buck there. You know, if somebody is doing that, again, that's down to them. Do you know what? The energy of what we do, how we are, how we uh, present ourselves to both worlds is picked up upon by people. I find it intensely interesting. Uh, some of the wonderful people that we have at Paul and including lovely Tim later on in October, November, beg your pardon. <coughs> um, we have these wonderful people come here, never heard of before, but there's a buzz about it. People go, oh, yeah, that's because there's something there that touches them on a level that no end of, you know, advertising on Facebook, Instagram, yada, yada, um you could do all that and you wouldn't touch to an nth degree just that feel that people get from people there's something there that they want there's something there that appeals to them because you know these people these tutors and I include you in this of course tim um, I've got to that stuff. I'm not putting you up on a pedestal by any means because we know what happens to people on pedestals. So that's a big no no. You're not up on a pedestal, but you have provide this wonderful example um, of how to be in that state of, and I'm not saying it's going to be easy for people like you by any means. But you're in that wonderful state of being where you've got a foot in both worlds and you can use both worlds to mediate, wonderful word, mediate the messages, mediate ourselves and our own thinking and our own placement. And then that next step of going, okay, X, Y, Z, let's do it. You know, let's not make it a thing. Let's not sit on it and growl and get all angry, let's just, just say, let's just say, you know, this is bothering, can we work through this, try our best, if it does, great, if it doesn't, that's fine, that's fine, things, you know, nothing, the only eternal thing in the world is change, nothing else is permanent, so Tim, Personally, I think mediumship and any form of psychic work is in quite a healthy place right now. It's spiritualism that seems to be struggling. The well-being of spiritualism has to lie in the hands of spiritualists. We are responsible for the nurturing of the religion we know as spiritualism, no matter what part of spiritualism you come from. So true. So true. I've always said, you know, um, bring it on a personal level for here. Um, quite a while ago, a couple of people commented saying, oh, "Why, you know, why do you have all these CSNUs, DSNUs, and everything? You're not a SNU church, I'm, you know. I'm not. I'm just using that as an example. It's not a point of focus." And I said, "At the end of the day, we're all spiritualists. You know, some people have got letters after their name. Some people haven't. I don't give monkeys. It's it's the person." That's, that's what attracts, this is, this is, you know, this is the light that you see. Somebody asked me about two months ago, how do you manage to book all these wonderful mediums? And I said, well, it's a bit difficult because I just see names and I go, oh, yeah, there's a resonance. And I don't question it. I don't go into the ins and outs of it. I just know there's a resonance there. And that's my guide. But very true, spiritualism is going through these throes. One of the issues, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a very dry throat. One of the issues is, you know, we are 
we're all individuals, we're all unique. And we can learn the basics of things on the same level. We can learn certain things approached and taught on the same level. But you very rapidly, with the right student, you then come into the realm of seeing them flower and them growing into their own presence and their own understanding. And to me, that's something to be celebrated. You know, I'm a spiritualist because everything we do has an evidential base. That, that's my philosophy on life. That's, this is Laurie's philosophy. So be it in the evidential message, be it in the address, be it in whatever, whatever, the healing. If you look for it, there is always that evidential basis there. There are a lot of philosophies coming to the fore now, again, thanks to the wonderful world of social media, that, yeah, fine, if you want to go along that route, that's absolutely wonderful. It's not for me because it's not an evidential-based thing. I cannot see any evidence presented. I'm only hearing people saying, but it's right. And it's, okay, it's right for you, but don't foist it on me, please. But, uh, yeah, spiritualism and spirituality, they seem to be dividing off at the moment. Spirituality is going down a road, uh, a few twists and turns on the way. But again, I look for the evidence. If there's evidence there, then I know it's a work of spirit. If there's nice and fluffy and feel good, or even worse, you know, Follow me, because only I have the answer. That, that's awful. And we're seeing some of those things come into light again now. Um, yeah, that's not right. But spiritualism, what it teaches us, what it can unfold in us, uh, is just nothing short of the miracle. It really is. I love seeing uh, students when they have that got it moment. When it really sort of like, ding, the light goes on, that little minor epiphany, and you just think, that's great. I don't think, oh, great, I taught them that. I think, oh, great, they got it. But what they're going to do with it, how they're going to work with it, is entirely down to them. Yeah. Um, and this is something, as I say, I think we, we do, we need an ego to get up on a platform. You need an ego for me doing this here. If I was shy, retiring, and very nervous person and said, oh, go live on the computer, you'd be going, yeah, right. <laughs> no, thank you. So we need the ego, but it's when the ego becomes egotistical. It's when it's allowed to run unchecked. It's when it's allowed to become the, uh, the forefront, the criteria of what we're doing. That's when we start to have the issues. You know, I love seeing other mediums excel. I love seeing other mediums uh, do different things. I was talking to a guy in Australia yesterday, and they're having a um, psychometry service. And I went, that's brilliant. That is so good. Why don't we see more of that over here? So you guess what was going to happen at Paul now, but never mind. Um, yeah, why not? You know, you still rely, you're using, you're honest, it's psychic to begin with, but it leads into the mediumistic. Uh, it's, it's really going to appeal to our congregations, you know, and we are seeing in churches and centres. Uh, I had a medium from Camberley come down and see me during the week, and they were relaying they'd done the last couple of services were less than 10 people in attendance because we're not meeting not meeting the needs of today we're not evolving with today um because i'm always a little bit mindful jean bassett in her talk said about you know we have people come into the churches so we give them their ribbons we give them this we give them that we give them this. 
And I knew what she was saying, and I absolutely loved it because she was just saying, you know, we're pandering too much to the people coming in. And we're not developing the person coming in. It was such an eloquent speech. So yeah, we you know our churches centres. I know, I know you do, Tim. I know you present things in a new way, in a different way. And I know that you will also will have had your um, critiques over that. Again, comes back to us. How do we handle it? You know, we have lots of choices. The peaceful way, if possible. If not, okay, that's fine. We go our own paths. Wish you luck. God bless. Um, but yeah, it's this is one of the big lessons I think for us is how we are not only with other people, with ourselves. You know, I'm sure there's people in the room tonight that have sat there all night awake. Uh, worry, worry, worry about something and, you know, really taking it to bits and putting it back together and trying different thought processes. But if we just start to work on that honesty value and just go, well, yeah, it's not for me. You know, that's not, like, that's not my path. That's not in my way at the moment. Uh, and that shouldn't be a challenge to the other person. Some people will take it as a challenge. That's fine. Again, what people do with what we say is none of our business, unless we have acted indiscriminately and purposely gone out to upset, then it is our business because we've got to rectify that. Hmm. Interesting. I needed this talk tonight. Thank you, everybody. Uh, lovely Reverend Ashley, the soul responds when it encounters the truth and it is felt by the congregation. It is beautiful when a medium or speaker connects with the real sense of presence. Very true. And again, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's allowing that inner light to shine. It's allowing that inner spirit to be worn on the outside to bring that presence through. It's one of the common misconceptions I feel that people have with the spirit world, and this is sadly indicative of the uh, standards of training and education within spiritualism, is that the other world is exactly the same as this, and people are just waiting for us to summon them down. Um, and they continue living a life exactly the same as they do here. And I just think, well, God, I hope not, because I know I've got planned. And none of it involves a house. <laughs> none of it involves a physical state of being. And it involves an awful lot of travel. <laughs> and expansion. Because that's there. You know, we, we have sort of like, not everybody, but in the main, people have limited the scope and the breadth and the understanding of the other world is limitless opportunities. It's a place where we, even with our deepest, deepest study in the whole lifetime here on Earth, we'll probably only scratch the surface because there's so many different convolutions go on. There's so many. Here's one for everybody. <clears throat> um, in this energy of how people sort of like, uh, view the other world. I have a very firm belief that every communication we have from the other world for purpose is not a random incident. You know, people are saying, oh yeah, well I was sat there thinking about them, uh, so of course they've come through just to say hello. You know, and it's conveying this sort of like, well I'm in charge, I wanted them there, and they were, so I'm happy with that. Why did they come through? You know, I, I just, I, this is something, this is going to be the next thought. This is waiting in the sidelines. <laughs> everything, everything that we do, the other world serves a purpose. I like, you know, there's also in the world of physical mediumship, there's an awful lot of upset going on and toing and froing and things like that. And my very core belief about physical mediumship is it's a wonderful, beautiful 
um, interaction between the two worlds, but it's got to serve a purpose. And that purpose isn't, I'm sorry, 80 people at £50 a head. I'm really sorry. I can't believe that is the purpose. It serves a purpose. When you read back Alexander, what's his name? Stuart Alexander, physical medium. Reading up on him a little while ago, and he was like in the 50s, 60s, 70s, that era. And he and this is before social media, so this is people like phoning up or uh, writing letters. And how the hell did they know to connect? This is, fascinates me as well. But they would invite other physical circles into their physical circles. And these physical circles, they're always in the back room. Now, only people of a certain generation will get that <laughs> because every house used to have the back bedroom. <laughs> The back bedroom was just, you know, it must have been on when they were advertising property, you know, lounge, diner, kitchen, outhouse, and a back bedroom. <laughs> but all these little physical circles would sit in the back bedroom, and they would invite other people uh, from other physical circles or sometimes suggested guests from the other world. I found that fascinating. I found that a really fascinating thing. Um because it would prove a purpose. Because even the biggest doubting Thomas, who would sit there and see a full-bodied ectoplasmic manifestation of their loved one, just think of the profound effect it would have on that person. And you don't know where that profound effect will lead that other person. What's that little nudge in their path? Where's it now going to take them? What route are they now going to go down because of that instance? You know, and I, I just marvel. I just, you know, I'm, I'm going to be sat up in the other world with a big cone cap on with a D on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, it, you know, every spirit, every encounter we have with the other world has a reason and i think sometimes we don't look for that reason enough we don't ask them what's this about we don't peel the onion when we're talking to them thank you ashley stuart alexander um yeah so yeah 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 it's so fascinating but do, do you see roughly where I'm going here? Because I'm, I'm, I'm working through this as I'm talking to you. I had the idea for tonight, and I thought, okay, this, this could go horribly wrong, or it could go all right. <laughs> um, you know, and it's, it's our involvement with the other world. We just took that time, that pause, that moment, just to invite the other world in with their thoughts and then work away, because they're not going to give us a simple instruction uh of don't do it it's not going to be that fight you know they're not going to live our lives for us that contravenes so many spiritual laws is unreal but they're going to give us other thoughts to go away with and mull and go over and contemplate and find our own peace because that's what we're here for find our own and it's not a selfish thing that is not a selfish thing I'm not talking about, well, I want to do this so everybody else be damned because I am going to do it this way. That is selfish. Um, but we can just go, you know what? No, time for a change. Time for a little shift. I want to explore this now. And I want to walk the gentle path with it. And I'm going to introduce that to loved ones, friends, family, congregations, whatever, fellow mediums. You know, I'm going to introduce that, if needs be, on a gentle way. Not start, you know, sniping and going, yeah, well, that, what you're doing is really, I've seen this, this is awful. What you're doing is so old-fashioned, you know, this is new mediumship. And you just think, oh, for Christ, this is your mediumship. Just, just get a grip with your love. <laughs> Lovely Reverend Ashley. Invitation was by invitation, word of mouth. 
and you were chosen to attend. It was an honour and experience and stays a lifetime. There was no sense of pay to play and you are entitled to be there and be entertained. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is an element um, that we are seeing, not just in the physical realms now, in the mental mediumship realms. You know, I see these adverts full of fun and laughter and I think, actually, I'd rather go to a service that's going to be full of information and genuine mediumship, but call me old-fashioned. This must be new mediumship. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But actually, I'm, you, talking to you now has just reminded me uh, of your links with the physical mediumship and by your mum as well. But I just found it fascinating how these people connected. You know, because there was no Twitter. Oh, hi, I'm a physical medium. <laughs> you know, that wasn't there. So this network evolved, and no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, uh, the other world put the right people in the right places to have the right conversations to do that networking. Absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever. Uh, we can come across people in the most unlikeliest of places, and they can be this huge revelation about things. I had that in Tunisia in a bar <laughs> and somebody said what do you do and I, at that time i was working on the railways and i went oh i'm a medium i was just sat there going why the hell have i just said that are you well and this whole thing evolved and friendship developed and i was just sat there going yeah, crafty lot of buggers you are. You really are. You're a bunch of monkeys at times. <laughs> Lovely Tim. I think the power of spiritualism does not lie in spirit communication, whatever that may be, physical mediumship or mental mediumship. The power of spiritualism is in the teaching and teaching us how to live our lives here and now. Exactly right. Exactly right. You know, we can demonstrate what we say. There is no death. We can demonstrate that. But that should then lead on to, well, hold on. If Aunt Bertha can talk to me now and she's dead in 100 years, who am I going to be talking to? And what am I going to be talking about? And, you know, will I have a legacy to leave behind? Will I be remembered fondly or, oh, Christ, send him back? <laughs> That's probably going to happen with me. Never mind me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does. Because again, it gets us on that own unique individual pathway. And it is by sitting there and just, you know, getting that influence from the other world, getting that awareness on the go. You know, there's nothing, sorry, there is nothing special. I can sit up here at nights and I can have a, absolute howl with the other world uh, other times some people just step in I'm going okay <laughs> sit down and if you want to talk talk there's nothing special about that really there isn't it is the most natural of things that we can do you know I've done this in services and circles I've got uh, hands up who has felt spirit around them and every time you ask that question 99.9% .9 of people put their hands up. So that's step one. You know, not only have you felt, you're aware of that spirit around you. Now, where does that take you? Where will you allow that to unfold you? Where will that start doing these? So it's a little bit like a big ship out in the ocean, isn't it? And every now and then a tug will come along and just nudge it slightly. Because if it gets nudged slightly here... Two hours later, it's going to be right in line to go under the bridge. It's, it's incredible. And it's exactly the same with the other world. We pick up these little gems, these little nuggets, these little thoughts. I do love the way um, I experience spirit. And they say things like, have you considered? Have you thought about? Do you think? So all the time it's been put back on me, and I get that. I, I think that's great. Partly my nature. If somebody was sat up there going, 
you've got to do this, I, I would probably bend every bloody rule that I can so I didn't have to do that <laughs> because that's me. But when the other world just bring in these thoughts and have you thought about this? Have you considered that? Have you considered the other person? I did have this in the service once and there was again this animosity between two people in the church. One was a medium, one was uh, on one of the DCs. And this medium asked this highly provocative question aimed at this person who was on the DC. And I just stood there thinking, actually, I just want to slap you because that's just out of order. But it just came through from the other world and said, you know, we can understand um, where you're at at the moment, but have you considered your impact on this, on the other people engaged in this triad or something? It was a word that just came out, and I was like, mm, I like that one. You know, and it did, and it was such a leveller. And afterwards, came up and went, yeah, I was a bit out of order. And I said, you're incredibly out of order. And I said, but fortunately, the other world handled it admirably. So, thanks, guys. But it is, it's about finding that middle ground all the time. It's finding what we can really trust, what we can really, we, we know inherently is right for us. Now, that's really important right for us again not from a selfish energy but from you know our own moral fiber energy about no this is right for me now this is time for change um you know what was was great what is now can be better not your fault not my fault needs to change again you are not in control of how the other person perceives or reacts to that. That isn't your responsibility, as long as you've done your best not to be provocative in what you say, what you do, how you act, how you are. Oh, dear. Lots of lessons to take away from this tonight, isn't there? <laughs> Love you, Tim. Some things just come to my mind how many times have you disagreed or debated with the spirit world yet you've never lost sight of how much of them yeah yeah really true uh here's a thought come to my mind how many times have you gone home and said to the spirit world that's it forget it we're not doing this ever again <laughs> that was awful and once you've got that humanity side out of the way, you suddenly, well, not suddenly, just the realisation dawns on you that actually it wasn't the other world. It was down to you. You behaved like that. You did that. It was your responsibility. Deal with it. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I, I have debated and I've asked. But as I say, they always put it back and say, well, have you thought of it this way? And have you considered that aspect of it? Because everything is so multi-layered, isn't it? There's very rarely is there a linear debate or discussion about something. You know, what's the tea? Beans. Right, that's it. Well, no, I don't like beans. But you always eat beans. <laughs> we start coming in all these other levels then. But you've always had beans in the past. And I've got beans for you tomorrow. <laughs> it then becomes um, these different levels that we have to try and operate on each time but yeah yeah I, I debate with the other world i i've uh, been involved in some things and just said to the other world, do you know what at the moment i can't see it i can't i know what you're saying but i can't see it and that's me that's something i need to work through it's something i need to gain to um <clears throat> take into my energies if i so choose at this time i may as well choose it now because if i don't i've got to come back and do it so yeah choose it now <laughs> um but yeah 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 we do we used to just sit there and just think i'm not too sure about that i really am not too sure about that i have my one of my probably one of my biggest stumbling blocks is my standards 
and sometimes they can be uh, the thing where I interact with somebody and just go, yeah, no, I'm sorry, that's just not cutting the rug, that's not there. Um, and I've had occasions then when the spirit world has said, well, consider where that their path is leading and the enfoldment to come. And I'm, I, the other stumbling block is I don't have a lot of patience. Now, I know that may come as a shock to some people. <laughs> <laughs> The human side comes in. And we are human. We are here to be human. We are here to um, experience these things. We are here to say and do things at a later date we think, yeah, do you know what? <laughs> you really didn't handle that well, did you? Mm, all good fun. <laughs> But anyway, just going back to that topic again, you know, with all this upset and discord going on, again, you know, does it involve you directly, yes or no? Is it going to affect you directly, yes or no? And if it's no and no, then just leave it alone, please, because I'm just seeing some people just throwing wood on the fire for no apparent reason other than look at me oh look i'm i'm not frightened to see these things yeah on facebook you're not but if that person was in front of you i have a, a very healthy rule in the church that we don't discuss or debate anybody or anything unless they are there as part of that conversation and that stops an awful lot of things being said because some you know again our human condition you hear something and you go, oh, yeah, no, that just backs up what I was thinking. Oh, God, yeah, I was thinking that and, you know, I felt that and blah, blah, blah. And here we go. And before you know it, you've got this little nest of negativity going on. Whereas, as I say, you know, we don't discuss uh, anybody or any organisation unless they're here. And then we, then we can talk about it. Then we can bring it out in the open. Anyway. Anyway, 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 I didn't think this is going to last so long, but thank you, everybody, for being here. I really hope some of these thoughts have helped. It certainly helped me. It certainly helped me because I went out after had a, a hard day today on a personal level, never mind. Uh, and I came back in, turned the computer on. The first thing I'm hit is yet another lengthy attack and I'm just like oh, God say this you know I, I should be in this energy now of openness and compassion and I'm, I'm not I'm gonna come in the door thinking I need something nice to take my mind off of things and I'm confronted by all this tirade of insults and abuse and it's oh for crying out loud get a grip so yeah when you have that does it affect you? Is it your business? No, no, leave it alone. Anybody else? Yeah, carry on. If you need to do that, that's fine. That's your issue. Don't expect me to jump on the bandwagon. Um, it's funny, I've used that phrase three times today. Um, yeah, don't expect me to jump on the bandwagon and back you up because we're friends on Facebook. <laughs> anyway, people, have a wonderful, wonderful night. Whatever you're doing, enjoy. Look forward to it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for being part of the conversation. That really does help. It really just sort of like keeps the energies moving on nicely. And remember, you can watch our divine service tomorrow. We have the lovely Carla Hain from Weymouth. She will be with us. She hasn't been for a little while, so looking forward to her return. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, next. Saturday, uh, we have Wendy Lyon on as our guest. So looking, looking forward to having a chat with Wendy next week. But in the meantime, yeah, summer's been pants, so every good day, just go out and enjoy it, have the most. We've got the air show going on down here. Such a shame. Thursday, Friday, good weather. Today, you know, the biggie, and it's just grey. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> There's always next year.
Lots of love to everybody. Good night. Sleep well. And as I say, just all this discord. Is it yours? Does it affect you personally? No, no. Then let it go. Oh, do that song. No, I won't. <laughs> Good night, everybody.